welcome to Sounding Board, a community television production of Seroptimus International of Novato. My name is Madeline Peters, and my guest today is Sarah Jones, who heads the Marin County Free Library. I'll have her give a little bit more of a description of her background in a moment. But first, a little information on Seroptimus. Seroptimus International's mission is improving the lives of women and girls through programs leading to social and economic empowerment. Well, Sarah, again, thank you very much for taking time out of your schedule, and I know you have. So, but before we get started, could you please just tell me a little bit more about yourself and your background? Sure, I would be happy to. So I've been the director of the Marin County Free Library now for going on three years. Um, J July of 2013 was when I began, so those were hard to believe, but coming up on July of 2016, so I like said approaching um, three full years, and uh, it's been just a wonderful opportunity to run a system like this. And my background includes um, running a variety of libraries, uh, two public library systems, and um, the, I was the Nevada State Librarian for seven years, and that was a, um, I had a library, a research library. I was actually also in charge of archives and records management for the state. So, you know, a good variety of, of all kinds of different things that I've done, but my heart has always been with public libraries, especially as you develop great programs within a community. So, um, as I said, just joining Marin has been, you know, it's been really a dream come true of to come to a place that values libraries in the way that, that Marin does. Well, I see that the, the attention that we're, um, the community is giving now in terms of libraries is the South Nevada Library, so I'd like you to speak more to that and then uh, we can go on and talk about the collaborations sure. and what's going on. It just seems as though every time we have a conversation there are innovative programs stemming from the Marin County Free Library. So yeah, well, tell us your story. I will tell you our story. So I think as folks know, the uh, we've had a South Nevada Library for quite some time and it's been in a variety of locations. For the last 10 years, it was in um, on Hamilton Field in what they call the hangars. So we were, I believe, in hangar six. And we had uh, about 3,000 square foot in, in that hangar building. And it was a nice building, you know, that, that's really beautifully developed in that area of Hamilton Field. But it really was not large enough. 3,000 square feet was just completely undersized for the service area that we had. And we also, so we had a 10-year lease, and we knew the lease was coming up, and we wanted to look at new opportunities. So we were actually invited by the Nevada Unified School District, who owns um, a nine-acre piece of property in Hamilton Field across from Hamilton School, and they wanted to develop it for a, an education opportunity. It's the U.S. Department of Education has leased that land to them with eventual ownership as long as they do an educational thing. So they didn't need to build more campuses. So they invited the library and said, well, you know, would you like to collaborate? And the idea is that we will build a much larger facility down the road. But I said, well, I have an immediate need, <laughs> <laughs> as in right now, because the lease is up. So through, you know, really uh, just a great collaboration of the school district being willing to be flexible and to, you know, get, government often has a lot of rules and, and things that we need to, you know, um, to follow. Yeah, to yeah. follow and to, but also to insert in both the school district and the library and the board of supervisors said, well, how can we best do this in service to the community? So the school district still owns the land and they actually technically own the, the South Novato Library building, um, but we gave the resources to, to put 6,000 square feet together of a modular. So it's all brand new and it's, I hope that people will come because it's just beautiful. It's you know, it looks like a square modular on the outside, but you come inside and it's bright and there's all kinds of windows and really exciting places for kids and a, for adults. We have a Veterans Resource Center. So we just took 3,000 square feet. We turned it into 6,000 square feet, much more room for people just to enjoy all the things that libraries have to do. So the library, as people know it, got bigger, better. Um, uh, more modern and more amenable, and that's just one piece of this whole partnership. Yes, so then could you uh, speak to the other um, I will. aspects? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so the, as I mentioned, the Nevada Unified School District was a full-on partner from the beginning, so they had two other modular buildings that they already owned, and in the interest of trying to um, make education better in Nevada, but not only for the Nevada Unified School District, but for all kids in the county, which is 
you know, a huge credit to that school district that understands um, that, you know, if every student in Marin has opportunities, then that's a good thing, and they're, they're so good about not looking just at their own jurisdictions. So they put their two buildings forward to be a variety of things. One was what they call a maker space, so they were looking at the ability for students and the community to learn about electronics, to 3D print, to use laser cutters, to do sewing machines, all kinds of creative activities, robotics. And then they also have what they're calling the classroom of the future, which is, hmm. again, what they think, which I think shows the whole forward thinking of that school district is that the classrooms that the kids are in right now were built in a model that's very different than the kind of people that we need to create you know, for the modern economy. So what they wanted to do is have a physical space where they could test new things. It might, it might be equipment, it might be furniture, it might be best practices. So, so there's a space to do that. And then the final partner, which we just got last November, which is really hard to believe that that came that quickly, mm -hmm. is new media learning. Mm -hmm. And new, Could you speak a little bit yeah, more about that? Yeah, I'm happy to. So new media learning is a group that had a, a, a facility in downtown San Rafael on 4th Street. They were next to the Renaissance Center. And through a variety of reasons, their space also, just much like ours, um, the space that they were in was no longer available to them. So their, um, the, the folks leasing that to them said, you need to find another place. <laughs> and through just great serendipity, it was actually the director of cultural services for the county who said, I think that you should meet the library director because I think she knows of a space. And so John McLeod, who is the director of new media learning, just came to my office, and I, I mean this literally in October, November, and he's frantically, you know, two months to look for a right. space. And I, we had, um, we had six thousand uh, square, or actually, four thousand square feet that we could offer him, and that was doubling his space too. So he brought um, all the maker tools. He brought a digital media lab, including a sound booth and, and recording, kind of like what we're in right now. Um, profoundly uh, modern computers with great software, Apple's um, ways to do digital mixing, all of that kind of um, you know, 21st century skills. And then just really a place where kids who get an interest in anything can develop that interest after school and in ways that they get to make and create and just do you know what you know, that whole things. lifelong learning um, engagement beyond the, beyond the um, classroom. confines of the classroom? Yeah. So uh, this new media uh, component, then that is that's not necessarily integrated within the school day. Not necessarily, but it can, can be. be. So there, the new media learning before their partnership with the Novato Unified School District on this campus. They had a, a firm and robust partnership with the Marin County Office of Education doing a variety of exterior programs, including like uh, programs for um, schools for, for kids with special needs and actual engineering. So they, they had groups where they countywide were teaching like juniors and seniors engineering skills. So they had, uh, they were doing formal learning things and informal learning things too. So what was fabulous about the partnership is we hoped to build all that, but we thought we were starting at square one and we didn't need to do that because New Media Learning joined us and they had all of this robust, not only materials, but programs. Well, and it seems too, they had the track record with the Marin County Office of Absolutely. Education to really understand the nature and needs of the educational right. community. So that yeah, so they it really been, was it's yeah, it was fortunate it, that you all came together. Incredible serendipity, and we all say that because, uh, you know, it, like it, we did have a we had a strong vision, but we just we didn't have all the practical um, tools to make it happen. So it was you know like really a three legged stool, and we found that, you know, we found that third leg, and they are a private nonprofit, uh, so and have great uh, partnerships. They have partnerships with Autodesk and Pixar and. You know, some just the, the firms um, in the Bay Area and the country and the world that are doing really cutting edge things, but absolutely are um, very interested in making sure that the kids that are coming out of high schools get skills that get them really prepared for what a 21st century learning environment is like. Uh, it's, uh, it's interesting because just to kind of listen to all of this, I mean, this is. It's more than just these different partners coming together. Obviously, the library 
um, needed to room, room to move and expand, it's, it's actually helpful that they didn't have to move very far right. from the hangars at Hamilton right. to the property that's part of mm -hmm. the Hamilton School Complex. Um, what is the what do you what is the vision? What is your vision for all of this? Because this is this is something unique. It's not something that no, it's uh, we that, actually uh, have a very um, I think a very powerful and a fairly developed vision, and that is that right now it's it's essentially three modular buildings, um, you know, square boxes, but with all these great amenities that we're talking about. And I think it's so important that the library is still there with a physical print based product, whether it's you know, books for young kids or adults, because I still think, and I believe this strongly, that for a very long time that's going to be a really important part of learning, that it isn't all computer-based. So the vision that we have is all three of these partners, you have, you know, a, a library and a school that have, that live very comfortably in the 20th century and now yeah. have some, you know, there are some issues about coming to the 21st century as things change. And then you have this private nonprofit that's firmly Planted in only the 21st century, exactly. and they and they want to help these other two partners um, make you know make that uh, make it all a reality for a better society, for better educated kids, for just the you know the um, the fact that we would all be better off if there were more collaborations like that. So the grand vision is that we would like to build a facility that has all of these three partners in a you know a, um, a, a facility that's designed and, and permanent, you know. The right, kind not of just a, the modulars. Not just the modulars. So, you know, like um, I, my group plan is something like the Buck Institute. The Buck Institute, right. Exactly. A, a really beautiful facility that honors the, uh, the, you know, the space and the place of Marin. And we have a lot of libraries in Marin, and we have some really fabulously beautiful ones, Belvedere Tiburon and Mill Valley, and the Civic Center is a pretty beautiful library, although it's quite small inside. I think there's totally room in Marin for there to be this learning center, library, technology center um, on that campus. And the great part about that is, as I mentioned, they have nine acres. So um, to be able to find property in Marin that needs to be dedicated to education is, again, you know, the kind of serendipity that, you know, you better seize the day. But the, the vision is that we become a model, not just for Marin, but for the Bay Area and the entire country about what these kind of collaborations could mean if um, you know, government gets together and private nonprofit gets together for, with a clear vision of a future. Um, my question as you were talking was directed at funding because what you're talking about, uh, it's, it's lovely what has happened mm -hmm. so quickly um, thank you for making the decision to uh, move to California and move to Marin <laughs> to you know, impart your vision on the, share your vision with the community. But funding, so you're, we're talking about government funding, and we're also talk about, talking about private right. funding. Right. So, um, well, I think there's what a, does that look like? There, it, there's a few options. I mean, both the school district and it's a little, it's more complicated, but definitely doable. Have um, the ability to go to voters for some bonding capacity and say this is what we want to build, this is the vision, this is how it makes our community better and see if we could get the community to actually say um, yes we would support that. I, I know it's um, um, those kind of things are difficult but the uh, it's, they haven't, the, Marin County has not been asked to build facilities. Our, our last facility was built in 1970 so you know, it is, I think, maybe possible and time that mm -hmm. an investment in a facility needs to happen. But we're very cognizant that we see this as a public-private partnership and we see um, private fundraising opportunities uh, available there to ask uh, nonprofits to help us make that happen. And there are literally dozens of models all over the country where that's been very successful. Both the deputy superintendent and myself have visited the downtown library in San Diego, which was about half public and um, half private, and it was it was substantially more like a hundred and fifty six million dollar build. It's multi storied and um, you know just a really enormous building. And as I said, they were able to put a variety of public funding sources and private funding sources to make that happen. But you have to have a compelling vision that's not just a building, but it's a you know it's a, a very important. For our future thing, so I, I think we could do it. 
Oh, I'm confident. I think what's going to be important that you have the vision, you have the uh, model that's emerging here, but as you said, plus other models that you visited in mm -hmm. other parts of the United States. Uh, probably the way that you build success is by building traffic. Absolutely. So, yeah, so we eh. see this first one as actually we've been calling it quite consistently a proof of concept to show that this is what this would look like when it's got 12,000 square feet of combination of all three things. Um, it's, it's really not enough library. It's really not enough makerspace. It's really a, not enough education. And one thing that we out of the gate are completely lacking is community meeting rooms. And that would be a, a huge focus of building a much larger facility is to have space for the community to meet and to do the 21st century things, not just for kids, but for us as adults, meeting, collaborating, being creative, finding ways to communicate. I think, you know, there's much, um, much research in our society that says we better get really conscious about that in the digital world that the human connection really matters. I'd like you to, uh, I'm curious about um, the private partnership and the makers and can you speak a little bit more to what you see, you know, you, you spoke generally, could you speak more specifically to how that integrates within this concept of the public-private sure. partnership? Well, one good example is when we opened, we had our grand opening. Um, the 30th? Yeah, January. the 30th of January. January. And one of the activities that we did at that grand opening, and this is, you know, it happened that day, but these kind of things are what's going on on a regular basis at the makerspace, is they had a volunteer individual who was um, worked in gaming. And he w what he did was create the, he was a graphic artist creating the, um, you know, the, the, uh, the creatures in the games. And so what he brought was a clay mold and he, and he started it as a monster and then he let kids recreate it as a monster, make it different, make its eyes different. And then they do a digital modeling of it so that the clay model can turn into a computer model and then that can turn into the creature in the video game. Oh so while that's totally creative and fun, the end product is getting a you know maybe a ten or an eleven year old to go, wow that's really cool. Here's how the the physical works. Here's how the digital works. And I really want to get to know more about that. And then you know hopefully that engages them to want to um, do that as a career. So I think that's the that's a really good example of um, how a a project based learning activity can actually connect to a real world job. Uh, what's uh, going? Can you talk about the nature of the interface with the with the public school K twelve? I can. So one of the in fact next Monday we will be um, doing assisting the Nevada Unified School District with a teacher development opportunity. So they'll be coming to uh, the community education center and meeting in both the maker space and this model classroom and the library. And what it is, is it's a group of teachers who are going to uh, deploy one-to-one -one technology in the school district. And what that means is each child has a device and they're deploying three different kinds of devices. And this is a, a pilot project to see how they might roll that all out to the rest of the school district. So the community education center through the library's help and the makerspace help um, and then the school district support is we're going to give them tools and information about support so that they can deploy that one-to-one -one technology successfully. So that means a lot of things. For the library, it means that we are helping them with telling a parent that a device is coming home, it's an educational device, here's, way you, here's ways you can make sure that your child is getting the most of it, they're not just you know, playing, you know, the games are, are, are videos or things like that. Yeah, it has some sort of, it has some um, educational or intellectual Right, component. so what we, yeah, we were, so it's just like, uh, you know, sending a tool home and helping guide the, the children through, and the parents through how the tool is a way to make their education better, not just, you know. Um, entertaining. Not just entertainment. So p part of our role is helping with creating some materials so, you know, it may be that these devices are coming home um, in a way that they're that uh, they wouldn't normally have a personal device for a child. So mm -hmm. you'd want to talk about internet safety and you know making sure you know chat rooms and and all of those things that we that kids need to be that, really well aware of, and right. parents need to be super aware of what those things look like in the connected world for a child. So I see this. It's like it's it's the. Um 
uh, social interaction component. It's the it's education. It's expanding opportunities for students using that integration that's available now through the different programs as you um, have mentioned. But then it's also moving into really developing a level of sophistication and understanding among the parents, guardians, and caregivers as well. Exactly. Uh, because that is, sometimes it just seems as though that's an afterthought. It may or may not be addressed. Mm -hmm. It's important, it seems to me it's important that the uh, uh, library then serves as that focal point for the community to provide an array of services, the integration, but that whole social responsibility piece as well. And absolutely. And, uh, you know, the, we're, we are poised and ready with so many digital resources. And one of the barriers that we have that we've been trying to get over is that if, you know, for disadvantaged kids, they, you know, those devices are really important. They may or may not have them. They may or may not have connectivity. So we, this is a, a good collaboration with the school district to, um, you know, to, to advance technology, but to do it in a right and um, careful, methodical way. Because as they come home with devices and they have a library card, that means they can get content without advertisement, because that's a big part of our role is when we buy resources, they don't, nece you know, they don't necessarily, well, they just don't come with, with advertising. And anybody who uses the internet knows that uh, everything comes, everything with, comes with, with advertising. advertising. But we buy, you know, we would license the material so a child might be able to read Huck Fim licensed through us and they won't get any, um, you know, they won't be constantly nagged to buy more uh, Mark Twain books. Right. They will just be able to, to, to do that one. That so, re represents a huge shift. Uh, uh, one of the things that I'm, I'm involved in working with teachers and teacher education, and one of the things is teachers have been trying to um, use different um, apps in their programs or really kind of uh, use different technological tools. That whole thing about advertising mm -hmm. and also design has been a problem as well. Yeah. So it seems as though you're also stepping into the role of, being, of vetting right. um, equipment to vetting um, whatever educational mm -hmm. tools which is a role libraries have been in from day one so it's just a new it's just a new format uh -huh. and I think that's a really exciting part we also have a pay for a resource for online homework help and it's a, an, an entirely closed and vetted environment where a child would get on um, in a chat situation with a teacher that's at the right grade level and knows the common core but is also completely vetted to not you know, to not provide any um, anything that might not okay, <laughs> right? And the whole conversations are always recorded, so it's a really safe environment um, that's a online. Service. That's a service that needs a little more publicity. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> it's I'll a, do my part. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, it's called um, um, uh, Help Now. Okay. And it's it's a great program. And I think actually, you and I need to talk yeah. a little bit more, and I'll explore those resources. Mm -hmm. We only have a few more minutes left in our program. I was like, I'd love to just <laughs> ask question after question. Uh, in light of what we've talked about and the fact that we're now at the end of our discussion, is it, what is one thing that you would like to say that you'd like to leave our viewing audience with that you think is really um, an important thing to convey at okay. the close of Well, I think, you know, and I... I I know that there's probably a lot of distance between the last time you and I taught or talked and whether or not anybody listened last time and will listen this time. But the the thing that I would like to talk about or leave people with, and I think it completely connects with this, is our role. We're taking our role extremely seriously about supporting education. And we think we actually asked our community in a couple of different ways through polling and through surveys. And about 85% of the of people in Marin said that the public library needs to be take a real role in public education. So we're taking that very seriously. And I hope when people hear me or any of our staff talk about that, they can see that we're, um, we're doing that with profoundly important outcomes. That's incredible. Um, I'll certainly do my part to carry your message forward. And I'm pleased And there's still to hear lots it. of great books, too. So. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> so don't worry about that. Well, Sarah, thank you very much for taking the time to be here. Uh, I, I, you and I don't have trouble continuing with no, the conversation. No, it's a, it's a so wonderful I conversation. <laughs> I have to schedule other times to um, 
continue our conversations and share the, your knowledge with the community. Well, thank you. I'd like to thank uh, Sarah Jones for taking time to join us. I'd also like to thank the people who serve as crew. Uh, they're volunteers from Seropimus International of Novato. Special thanks to Leon Johnson, who is our studio engineer, who adds his magic touch to turn these programs into works of art. Special thanks to the Buck Institute for Research on Aging for making their lovely studio available to us for our recording. My name is Madeline Peters. Thank you for your attention.